Well, there's no turning back now. There really is going to be a game between the Mud City Manglers and the Wasamata U Pigeons. What's more, Bullwinkle is now our quarterback. And what's more, these are the diagrams of the plays we're going to play. And what's more, they're the wrong diagrams. Yes, Boris had switched diagrams, and the hapless moose was now going over a set of battle plans of the Civil War. Or as we call it, the war between the states. Now, wait a minute. Who are you? Colonel Jefferson Beauregard Lee, sir. Yeah, but you're not part of our story. No, I'm from the League of Confederate Correctors. The League of Confederate Correctors? Every time a program refers to the late unpleasantness as a civil war. Uh, you show up and correct them? That's right, Shug. We call it the war between the states. Yeah, but... I just can't abide the word civil. Meanwhile, in the locker room of the Mud City Manglers... Remember, if any of your opponents walks off the field under his own power, it means 20 lashes. <laughs> All right, men, and I use the term loosely, take the field. The team's lined up, and Wasamata kicked to the Manglers. <laughs> Instantly, there was a huddle, and when it broke up, nobody appeared to have the ball. Who are we supposed to tackle? Come on, which of you girls has the ball? What do you think I am, a rat? You got it, lady. And before the astonished crowd, the Manglers strolled innocently down the field past the baffled Wasamata players. Then as they reached the goal line, one of the scoundrels pulled the deflated ball from under his mini blouse. Oh. Touchdown! 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 Any objections, wise guy? Miss, I'll thank you to keep a civil tongue in your head. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, a war between the states tongue. Oh, boy. Now, wait, Mr. Referee. Did that really count six points? Well, of course not, Rocky. It, ooh, <laughs> it counted seven points. Well, with the referee intimidated, the manglers had it all their own way. Hup! Pass it, Bullwinkle! Ollie! Oop! <laughs> Incomplete, incomplete. The pass? The ball. I use ready guide through. Let's have it, Sybil. Uh-uh, war between I the... said <laughs> Sybil, not civil. Sorry, man. Play the game, play the game. It was easier said than done. We're close enough to try a little field goal, Bullwinkle. Just kick it between the goalposts. Right, Rock. Hop. The kick looked good until two manglers moved the goalposts. At this rate, we'll never win. We'll be lucky to lose. But on the next play... Bullwinkle, look at this! Good heavens, Rock! You've scalped the scat bag! Scout nothing! This is a wig! Bullwinkle, they aren't girls at all! Oh, darn. What's the matter? I was gonna ask the halfback to the prom tonight. Well, anyway, it's our ball. Yeah, but look at that defensive line! Hokey Smoke, they've dug trenches! And they've all got guns! Mr. Referee, how about calling a penalty? Oh, I will, Rocky. Five yards against Wasimati for delaying the game. Don't you have any courage? Yes, but I've also got a wife and kitties. And with a score seven to nothing, the hands of the clock crept closer to defeat for our boys and triumph for Boris Badenov. Don't miss our next episode, Bullwinkle's Battle Plans or Civil Def... Ah, 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 war between the state's defense. That is not funny. I know. I can't abide jokes, neither. <laughs> Hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. But that trick never works. This time for sure. Presto! Well, I'm getting close. And now it's time for another special feature. Many years ago, in a primeval pond, there were many frogs. But there was one frog among them who was different from all the rest. His mother called him Julius. Julius, you sit around all day doing nothing. Why don't you go out and play leak people with the other frogs? Thanks, but uh, no thanks. Oh, what is the matter with you, Julius? You haven't touched your lunch. <laughs> people have more fun than frogs. Yes, I guess they do. Now eat your flies. But it's no fun eating flies. In fact, uh, being a frog is no fun, you know. If you want to have fun, you've got to be a people because... Uh, I know, I know. People, people have, have more, more fun, fun than, than frogs. frogs. Yes, that was the trouble with Julius. People did have more fun than frogs, and he knew it. For many was the time he would sit by the road leading to the great kingdom and watch the people as they passed. They were all having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Julius couldn't stand it any longer, and knowing that he could never be happy unless he was a people, why the little frog hopped off into the dark woods to do something about it. By noon that same day, he arrived at the house of his fairy frog mother. So you want to be a people, do you, Julius? Um, more than anything. Can you do it? Well, of course. All I have to do is tap you with my wand, like this. 
worked. It worked. For he began to grow and grow, and suddenly... <laughs> unfortunately, there are all types of people, and Julius had turned into the type that is fat and bald with a long nose. It's quite possible that Julius would have had fun, but for one thing. The first person he chanced to meet was the local bully. Hey, fatso, come here! Uh, yes? Hey, let me see if that nose is real. <laughs> hey, what do you know it is? <laughs> Boy, I'd like to have that thing full of nickels. <laughs> And from that moment on, everywhere Julius went, people laughed at it. Now, this is no fun, even if you are a people. So, Julius returned to the house of his fairy frog mother. Well, land sake, why didn't you tell me you wanted to be a handsome people? Uh, never mind. Uh, the point is, uh, could you do it now? Well, certainly. I simply have to tap you with my wand and... When the smoke cleared, he had been changed into a fine, strong, handsome young man. Now, certain that he could begin to have fun as a handsome people, Julius hurried back to town. It was then that another unfortunate thing happened. The evil king of a neighboring kingdom declared war. And Julius was drafted. Army life was not easy on Julius. Name? Julius, uh, we were one us. Where were you born? In a pond in New Jersey. Very funny sign here. Next. Good heavens, where did you get those flat feet? Well, it's simple, you know, like, you say, I'm really a frog, and... Very uh... funny. Next. Turn your head and cough. Hey, hey, ha, he, hey, hey, her, hey! There were months of drilling, marching, and intensive training. <laughs> then, finally, Julius was marched into battle, where his luck ran through to form, for Julius was the first casualty. Weeks later, when he was released from the hospital, Julius once again hurried to his fairy frog mother. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, frog mother, I could not stand to go through a thing like that again, you know. So, like, you gotta make me four F. All righty, all I have to do. I know, tap me with your wand, but not so hard. The tap of that little frog mother's wand was enough to make anybody four F. So, for the third time, Julius headed for town to have fun as a people. He'd only gone a short distance along the road when he suddenly heard a startling sound. <laughs> And there, just ahead, he saw a large, vicious dog that had chased someone up a tree. Go away. Shoo. Scat. Then... It's safe to come down now. Jump and I will catch you. Well, I will be. I did not know that uh, dogs treat pigs. I'm not a pig, silly. I'm a princess. And because you saved my life, you get to marry me. Marry you? Yes. Isn't it romantic? Here, yeah, boy. Here, yeah, boy. I'll have father arrange for the wedding right away. No, 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 no. Hey, come back! This time it was a desperate Julius that ran to the house of his fairy frog mother. I never want to be a people again. Change me back into a frog, frog mother. Hurry, hit me with your wand. Can't broke it over your head when I made you 4F. But there is a way. If you can just hold out until the clock strikes 12, the spell will be broken and you'll turn back into a frog all by yourself. peek a boo Yoink. Julius ran like a deer for the next five hours. Then, when it seemed as though he simply couldn't take another step, the big clock in the tower struck twelve. And with a blinding flash, Julius turned back into a frog. And he never did have any fun. Now one would admit that this is rather a sad tale of a frog. But don't feel too badly, because not a word of it is true. For, you see, it's a well-known fact that frogs don't have tails. Oh, 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 oh. My grandfather's clock. Sure is a big one. Yep. My grandfather's clock was too large for the shelf, so it stood 90 years on the floor. How come it's not running? Uh, see, it says always his treasure and pride. It stopped short, never to go again when the old moose died. Your grandfather's dead, Bullwinkle? Well, exactly. He just sort of disappeared. But that doesn't rhyme so good. And the clock hasn't run all these years, huh? What do you mean, all these years? He disappeared yesterday. Yesterday? And the clock stopped? Hey, do you suppose... Uh-oh. Let me open her up. <laughs> Grandpa, it's you! You're expecting maybe John Cameron and Swayze? Well, if that don't beat all, how could anybody be so stupid as to get locked up in a clock? Stupid? Why, it's easy. Like this. Oh! Now there's something you don't see every day, Rocky. What's that, Grandpa? A clock with a face on both sides. And now it's time... Time for that jolly juggler, Bullwinkle. Oh, dear. Three at once. One, two. And now here's a feature you're sure to like. Three.
Somewhere in the inner regions of outer northwest Canada, an inventor was at work. And that inventor was Snidely Whiplash. And his invention? Dudley Do-Right of the Mounties. Well, not exactly. It's a mechanical Dudley Do-Right. He doesn't move, Snidely. Of course he doesn't move. That's what this key is for. Gee, if he could only talk, he'd be the splitting image of Dudley Do-Right. What do you mean, not talk? What do you think I bought this record for? Yes, sir, Inspector Fenwick. Hello, Nell. It's Tommy this and Tommy that and chuck him out, the brute. But it's savior of his country when the guns begin to shoot. Uh, what was that last there? Uh... Kipling. Yes, sir, Inspector Fenwick. Hello, Nell. Gee, he looks real fine, Snidely. Real fine. But uh, what are you going to do with him? Don't you see, Homer? We're going to kidnap the real Dudley Do-Right and substitute the mechanical one. Why are we going to do that, Snidely? Because in that way, we'll be able to carry forth our nefarious mischief without the real Dudley Do-Right interfering. So as the real Dudley Do-Right was taking an afternoon stroll, <coughs> Snidely Whiplash substituted the mechanical Dudley Do-Right. Why, hello, Dudley. Yes, sir, Inspector Fenwick. <coughs> I'm not father. I'm Nell. Hello, Nell. I just bought the most beautiful hat. What do you think of it, Dudley? It's Tommy this and Tommy that and chuck him out, the brute. But it's safer of his country when the guns begin to shoot. What guns, Dudley? Yes, sir, Inspector Fenwick. Yes, sir, what, Dudley? Hello, Nell. Hello, Dudley. Come with me, Dudley. I have a job for you. It's Tommy this and Tommy that and... And none of your back talk do right. Meanwhile, back in Snidely Whiplash's shack, the real Dudley Do-Right was talking. Oh, Snidely Whiplash, you will never get away with this, <laughs> for everyone knows there is only one Dudley Do-Right of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Beware of substitute brands. Come off it, Do-Right. They'll never know the difference. And these two culprits are trying to smuggle furs across the border. I want you to bring them in. Hello, Nell. I've noticed something strange about Dudley. He's more succinct. Succinctness. I like that in my mounties. Good work, Dudley. But it's saving of his country when the guns begin to shoot. Put up quite a fight, did they? Yes, sir, Inspector Fenwick. I thought so. Hello, Nell. What? They're robbing the bank! <laughs> yes, surprising as it may seem, the mechanical Dudley Do-Right was a better Mountie than the real Dudley Do-Right. It always got its man. Much to the chagrin of Snidely Whiplash. Homer, I think I've created a monster. So Snidely Whiplash took back the real Dudley Do-Right to the RCMP. Oh, Inspector Fenwick, what you think is the real Dudley Do-Right is in verite a mechanical Dudley Do-Right. Here is the real Dudley Do-Right. Yes, sir, Inspector, what he's telling you is the truth. Yes, sir, Inspector Fenwick. Oh, are you trying to tell me I don't know the difference between a mechanical do-right and a real Dudley do-right? Why, this is the real Dudley do-right. Hello, Nell. And you, sir, are an impostor. What, Inspector Fenway? Out! Out the two of you before I have do-right here throw you in the stockade. Gee. Where did I go wrong, do-right? Compose yourself, whiplash. We'll get to the seat of this problem now. Oh! Oh, the key! I completely forgot about the key! Why, Dudley do right is due to run down almost any time now. Now, do right, I want you to listen carefully because this is possibly the most important assignment of your career as a mounter. Hello, Nell. Hello, Nell. <laughs> hello, Nell. Hello, Nell. What's wrong, Dudley? You seem a little redundant today. Hello, 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 hello. But it's saving of this country when the guns begin to shoot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dudley. Pull yourself together. Aha, Inspector! Now you see with your own two eyes that I am the real Dudley Do-Right of the Mounties. Well, perhaps you're right. Then tell me, what is this assignment you have for me that is so important? Assignment? Oh, the assignment! Well, the assignment is to hurry up and put that machine together again. That was the best Dudley Do-Right the Mounties ever had. Yes, Inspector Fenwick. Yes, Inspector Fenwick. Ready, Rock? You sure you know how to work that thing? No. Anyways, here's what it was supposed to look like.
In our last episode, you remember, Wasamata's football future looked very dim. First, Boris Baranov's Mud City Manglers had intimidated the referee. Intimidated? Heck, I'm terrified. Then they had turned their defensive game into trench warfare, complete with barbed wire and gun emplacements. And to make matters even worse, Boris had stolen all of Wasamata's plays. Natasha, now I think I'll take up smoking cigars. Why now? <laughs> so I can light one with these football plays. Other people use a hundred dollar bill, darling. Right now, these are worth a million. Yes, they were, for Boris had made hundreds of bets on the game in illegal gambling joints all over the nation. Hey, Manny, it looks like that girl's team is going to beat what's the matter you. Don't worry, Lefty, I'm prepared. You're going to pay off? You kidding? You see that emergency box on the wall? In case of disaster, break glass. What's inside, money? Nope, a one-way ticket to Brazil. At that moment, the referee raised his pistol to signify the end of the first half. <laughs> Lying flat on the ground, our heroes were safe momentarily, but the spectators in the end zone didn't make out as well. Manny... The Mud City Manglers just shot away the end of the stadium. What do you say to that? Adios, amigos. Boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, 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 chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, boom, boom. When our heroes finally made it under fire to their dressing room, gloom was written on every face. Except mine. I got despair written on mine. If only they hadn't stolen our football plays. Well, they left these in their place. Bullwinkle, those aren't football plays. Those are battle plans for the Civil War. Uh, 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 war between the states, you mean? Colonel Beauregard, you here? Us members of the League of Confederate Correctors is everywhere. I've noticed. I just can't abide the word civil. Well, here, maybe you'd like to have these plans. My pleasure. Ah, Chancellorsville. There was a battle. What a cavalry charge. Looks more like an end run to me. Bullwinkle, that's it. If the manglers are going to use battle tactics on the gridiron, why can't we? Why can't we? Bullwinkle, you've done it again. Come up with a brilliant plan like that. Yes, sir. Now, there's just that one little question. Yeah? What is it? This is the plan. Instead of football plays, we're going to use the battle plans of the... Ah, ah, ah. I was going to say war between the states. Us Confederate correctors can never be too sure. And so when the whistle blew for the second half of the game, it was a strange-looking team that emerged from the Wasamata U dressing room. Look at them fellas, Roof. They gonna fight the war all over again. Shucks, we Southerners been doing that for years. The ball was snapped and Bullwinkle commanded. By the right flank, ho! Well, the game started up again, but this time the Mud City Manglers were no match for the military genius of the flower of the Confederacy. In one great flanking motion, the Wasamata team turned the end of the line and swept down the field. Uh, Bullwinkle, you did it! There's the goal, just ahead! Hey! Bullwinkle, why are you stopping? Which direction are we running in, Corporal? Well, south, of course. South, eh? I thought so. These plans call for us to go north. And Bullwinkle turned and began dashing toward his own goal line. On he went, swivel-hipping his way through the opposition. Dag nabbit, you said civil. All right, war between the states hipping his way through the opposition. Oh, what can save the game for our boys? Maybe we could get some new writers. Don't miss our next hysterical, historical episode, Bullwinkle Buys a Fence, or Pickett's Charge.